guys welcome back to my channel this is letters this is just a little bit of like an impromptu conversation that i wanted to have with you guys um and actually it's continuing the conversation that sarah ensign from ensign insights she has a youtube channel as well i'll link it down below um, she has started this conversation and I think it's a really good one to continue and to have a lot of people share their own thoughts and experience on it. So the topic that I want to talk about today is loving your own lettering artwork, or you could even say more broadly, loving your own artwork. So as Sarah points out, it's really important to love your own artwork and to be influenced by other artists that you love but not necessarily to compare yourself to other artists and i wanted to kind of build upon that because i think that's really an important first step to take is to recognize when you're comparing your own art to somebody else's and you're kind of getting in your head about that and thinking oh i'll never be good enough I'm never going to make anything as good as this other person. Um, I just wanted to give my own two cents on that and say having thoughts of comparison to another person is perfectly normal. If you are creating a piece of artwork or you have finished a piece of artwork and you have the thought go through your head like this just isn't as good as like, I guess, Sarah, or <laughs> I don't know, whoever else you love as an artist, that is a perfectly normal reaction for your mind to have. And I guess I wanted to talk a little bit about this because I have been doing a lot of my own mindfulness practice. And if you're not familiar with what mindfulness is, it's when you just tune in and become aware of what's happening in your body. So what physical sensations are you feeling? What's happening emotionally for you? And what's happening in your mind? So um, it's basically just being aware of what's happening internally. And so as I've been doing more and more mindfulness practice within myself, I've become aware of how my thoughts are acting as I'm creating my own pieces of artwork and as I am like finishing it up and you know taking all the pictures so I can post it on Instagram and Pinterest and share with all of you guys and something that I've noticed is there's just this natural like dialogue that can happen in my mind or kind of just these natural like feelings that will come up of either like aversion like oh I don't uh, I don't like that like that didn't turn out as the way I wanted it or as good as I wanted um, or there are like natural feelings that arise of like, I love that, or I'm proud of that, or I think that looks really pretty. And I think in our society, we've kind of been shamed to have either one of those reactions. Let's talk first about the positive reaction, which I feel like probably a lot of people are even like afraid to admit they have, like when they look at a piece of their own artwork, I feel like a lot of people are afraid to say, oh, I'm proud of what I just created, or I'm proud, like I enjoy these colors that I've used, or I like the shapes of those letters or florals or whatever. Um, that's something that I've noticed that like, it just seems at least on social media, like it's not okay to put in your caption, I really love this piece of artwork that I've created. I don't see a lot of people writing that. And um, I also don't hear a lot of people vocalizing that or expressing that. And um, I just think that's something really interesting to notice. Um, you know, take note of the times when you kind of have thoughts uh, or feelings of really like taking pride in your artwork or enjoying your artwork or feeling like you've gained a new skill. And you notice this kind of resistance coming up to that like appreciation for your own skills and the appreciation for just the piece of artwork that you've made because like you're not your artwork your artwork is a creation that you've made so um 
I don't know, think about like somebody who has built like a house. Think about somebody who's built a house and they have finished building the house and they step back and they look at the house. I feel like people would be pretty okay with like saying like, I am so proud of how this house turned out. It is beautiful and I am so proud of my handiwork. But for some reason, when it comes to the creative arts, I think there's just this, uh, there's this shame that's put upon us if we express admiration towards something that um, has come from, from us, that we've created. Um, and so I think it's really important, step one, to notice that, become aware whenever that resistance comes up, because you're naturally going to have feelings of liking things, and especially if it's something that you're creating and you're choosing the colors and you're choosing the words you're writing and the embellishments that you're making, there's probably going to be things that you will enjoy about the finished product or about the creative process. So notice when those feelings come up of liking it and notice the feelings that come up of having almost this uh, pushing against those feelings of liking your artwork. And as we notice those feelings coming up of liking and then the resistance, that can help create a space where we can say, all of what's happening inside of myself is okay. And we can embrace ourselves because we deserve that. I feel like creating art is a really important process for a lot of people, like for myself, making artwork is part of my kind of therapeutic process for how I deal with kind of some of the chronic conditions that I'm experiencing. The creation process and the finished product of the artwork are both really important for me. They're, they give me a sense of fulfillment and accomplishment, and it's also just something beautiful that I can create and um, share with other people and hopefully change the lives of other people, which is really important to me. So I can take the time while I'm creating my artwork to notice where there's a lack of self-acceptance and where there's a lack of self-love, which would be when those kind of um, thoughts of, oh, I shouldn't be loving my artwork. Like I shouldn't think my art is so great. Um, that makes me cocky, you know? Um, whenever feelings and thoughts like that arise, that is the perfect opportunity to embrace them, to kind of nurture myself, give myself a little internal hug. I don't think I usually like give myself physical hugs, but you can do that if you want. Um, and, uh, and allow that to be. I think that's a really important step in loving your own artwork is allowing what arises as you create the artwork and as you're looking at your finished piece of artwork allowing whatever arises to be and accept it as perfectly okay so that's kind of like the first thing that i wanted to cover and then the second part is there's this shame around expressing when we dislike a piece of artwork that we've created or part of a piece of artwork that we've created. So I, um, I get a lot of comments on the posts that I post on Instagram on, on the artwork that I post. And, um, it's really interesting. There have been times when I've written in the caption, like, I'm not really happy with the way this part of the artwork turned out or, um, I, I dislike this aspect of this piece or whatever. And it's really interesting that people will comment and say, oh no, it's, it's great, you should like it. Um, you know, things like that. There's almost this uh, message that I feel like I get from other people and also from within myself, like it's not okay to dislike my own artwork and it's not okay to vocalize when I dislike my own artwork. And I'm here to say it is perfectly okay and perfectly normal to dislike something you've created. Like, I 
don't get to choose what my preferences are. I don't get to choose like whether I like the color blue more than the color red, which is the case for me. It just is what it is. Like those are just my personal preferences. I don't know what created it, but it's been this way for so long. Like my love of florals. I don't know if you can see behind me, but there's probably a lot of like flowers behind me. I just love florals. That's something I enjoy. Not everybody does, and that's okay. I think what it says about you when you have a feeling of um, aversion or like repulsion towards something you've created, all it says about you is that you just dislike that element of your artwork and that's okay. Like that's your personal preference and um, I honor that. And it's something that I'm, you know, working on within myself, I think is like being okay with not liking something that I've created and being okay with sharing that with other people. Because I think if I have the courage to share something that can be a little bit like scary to say with other people and to share it confidently and to let people know that I don't think there's anything wrong with that, I think that does a service to other people because then they'll get the message like, oh, Alyssa, who creates all of this artwork and you know, has somewhat of a following on Instagram. Um, she's okay with acknowledging that there are parts of what she creates that she doesn't love. And maybe I can be okay with it too. Um, so now let's take this a step further because, so the message is that we are supposed to love our own artwork. And I want to say that loving your own artwork does not mean that you love every aspect of what you have created. What it means is loving the process of creating, meaning finding joy in the process, noticing when you're not experiencing joy and when it doesn't feel good for you and when you're not in the flow and taking care of yourself in the ways you need so you can get back into that flow. That might mean for me like taking a few days off from creating artwork or starting a new piece of artwork while I'm still working on another piece of artwork that's like kind of frustrating me so I can like put my attention elsewhere. Um, and just finding all the ways possible to bring joy and peace and love into the process of creating. And loving our artwork also means loving ourselves for every reaction we have to our art. Whether that be, I really love what I made or hmm, it's good, but I think I could do better, which I think is the reaction that I personally have to maybe like most of my artwork that I create. I feel kind of like, okay, that was good, but I can do better. And then, um, you know, our reaction might also be one of hatred or disgust or just dislike. And learning to become aware of whatever our reaction is to our artwork and then learning how to say to ourselves over and over and over, it's okay that I feel this way. That's a part of bringing love and a mindfulness practice into our creative process. Okay, so I've covered a lot. I just wanted to go back to what I said at the very beginning of this video, which has to do with comparing yourself to others. Now, I feel like I kind of get like resistant or frustrated when I see people post things that say, don't compare yourself to others. Um, comparison is the thief of joy. What I have to say about that is I just disagree. I think that comparing ourselves to others, not only is it natural, like, our minds are just gonna do that. And we can't really stop what our minds think. If we try to do that, that can be really unhealthy. Um, so 
those thoughts are going to come up of comparison or just a feeling of like, oh, I'm, I'm never going to be as good as this person, or maybe not even that, but just that person's specific post was amazing and I want to aspire to be like that. Um, that's another type of comparison because underneath that thought is, oh, I'm not yet at that person's level. Well, what I want to say about that is those communications coming from our thoughts and our feelings are actually really valuable because they're leading us in the direction of where we want to go. When we see somebody's artwork that we compare ourselves to and we think, I want to be as good as that, that's basically indicating to us, I like elements of that person's artwork. And maybe there are elements that I have not yet gained the skills to be able to incorporate into my own artwork, but I would love to gain those skills. And then you can go about trying to find ways to gain those skills, like watching a YouTube tutorial or reaching out to that particular artist on Instagram, sending them a DM. I don't know why I did this. We do not use typewriters nowadays. Um, we use our phones. Yeah, so you can always reach out to an artist. Like people all the time from around the world, you know, will message me and say, you know, can you give me some suggestions on how I can improve on whatever it is, whatever technique they see me using. That's a great way to learn from somebody. And, you know, if we don't have those feelings inside of like, I could do better. Like I, I see this of what this other person is creating and I want to be like that. There might not be like much of a motivation for us to grow. I guess what I want to say, what this whole conversation or actually more like a monologue of me just talking to you or at you. Um, I guess the whole conclusion is whatever you're feeling and whatever thoughts you have about your own artwork, it's perfectly okay, perfectly normal, perfectly acceptable. And some of the things that I've offered today, like um, the tools of acceptance and embracing and simply like witnessing what arises inside, inside of you without trying to push it away, um, that can really help cultivate more peace and love within yourself through the creative process and instead of trying to force yourself to love your artwork more than somebody else's it helps you cultivate i would say like authentic love within yourself towards your artwork and then you can also feel like gratitude for other people in a way you might not have been able to before um, I know like when I, when I look at artists whose profiles I admire and there are like a couple that come to mind right now, well, a few, and I think, oh my God, like those artists are just geniuses. Like they're amazing. And I just aspire to be like them. Um, you know, there might be a feeling of like, oh, they're so much better than me, which definitely comes up. But then there's also this feeling of like, I can look at their artwork and study their artwork and incorporate some of those elements that I like within my own artwork. And then there is natural gratitude that arises. So there is so much more to say about topics like this. And I'm just interested in hearing your own thoughts. I'd love to have you comment your own experience with what it's like to love your own artwork where you feel like your own roadblocks are on that journey to creating more and more love for what you're creating. And, um, you know, what questions arise for you as you hear, you know, what I'm saying? Does this resonate with your own experience or do you have anything to add to what I'm saying? Let's continue this dialogue that Sarah Ensign so graciously has started for all of us and see if we can help build one another up, help one another feel really good about what it is that makes, you know, each of our own um, artistic styles 
valuable and unique for this art community. Thank you so much for watching this video, for listening to my thoughts. And um, if you want more videos that are like this, where I kind of sit down and just kind of spew out my thoughts, let me know. I think that I really like it when other people show their own faces on their YouTube channels and on social media. So when I can, I will try to do it more often so you can see the person behind the account. So anyway, thanks again for watching. I'll see you in my next video and I hope you're all safe and well. Bye friends. I'll